So let's talk about what service-oriented architectures is. Service-oriented architecture is built of two words. One is services, another is an architecture. So when we say about architectures, architectures in a normal language, it means framework, and frameworks are always built on standards. The first and foremost is SOA is built on standards, and it is a set of standards. So who are the who have given these standards? So it has been given by a consortium of companies, which includes Oracle, IBM, uh, you know, uh, uh, Primavera, and all those. So now, now we know what architecture is. Now another is what a service is. Services, if I say, is in many in a very layman language, is anything that does a unit piece of work as part of a business process. Now, in your day-to-day -day life, you know, when you go to any web page, you must be seeing. Uh, uh, you know, on the side you will see a Yahoo Weather service where you just put the uh, the zip code of a place and you get uh, uh, get uh, you know the weather of that particular place. Now this one is on many sites. Now nobody implements the Yahoo Weather service apart from Yahoo. So you know what Yahoo has done is Yahoo has exposed some of its functionality as a service so that some people can use it. And you know uh, can you know use it and get the output. That's all is the main. So in the service paradigm, there is always a consumer who sends the request and gets the response back. Okay, like in our case, there can is a we send a zip code and get the uh, get the uh, the you know weather of that place. Another example can be Google Maps. So our website these days gives you the, you know the Google Maps and all those. So nobody keeps the database of whole Google at its end, right? So Google has, what it does is, it has exposed its uh, APIs as a services so that you can use in your system, in your website or anything, and you can, you know, uh, show the place or something like that, address on that. So that is what the services are. So again, anything that does a unit piece of a work as part in, in a business process is called a service. Now when I, you know, join these two words, services and architecture, and I call it service-oriented architecture, I say an architecture style for integrating loosely coupled interacting software services. So here we already know what the architecture means, that is it's a standard-based uh, standard, uh, standard that has to be done. Now here comes the word loosely coupled. What a loosely coupled means? So loosely coupled has evolved through some of the, you know, um, in a, uh, sorry for that, it does something like sometimes in my system. So, so how the system, how loosely coupled systems have involved and, you know, so for that, let's go back and see how the you know how organizations have been evolving as uh, you know and buying the product as they want it. So previously, when you know uh, people used to like for most of the organization do something like this, they always want to have best breed of products for their for their different needs. Like for their HRMS, they bought people soft, they buy people soft. For their uh, for their order management. They buy SAPs or they are uh, financial things, they buy Oracle Financials. For their CRM, they buy Seabird. And then they think, oh, let's integrate together. So they start the integrating like this. So these points can be your JMSQs, FTPs, uh, they can be even your HTTPs cost, anything. Now the problem with these type of systems is that, you know, if I have to add another system, I have to do the same work, we work again. Also, if I want to remove Siebel and put it in Salesforce, which is a cloud system, I have to redo the thing. That means the change is global, uh, global change. That means I have to put a lot of money to do this type of work. These systems are called tightly coupled systems. So uh, said, this is not the way. Let's do it in a different way. So what they did was, 
they sat still again they had uh, uh, you know the people soft they had the SAPs for their order ma uh, order management they had Oracle financials and Suva SAS stands in the middle now integrations were done like this and every system is nothing but a service so like I said I gave the example of a service as a Yahoo as a service nobody knows what behind the scene how Yahoo as a service has been implemented we don't know whether it's a Java it's a dot net or anything all that we know is that we just send a zip code and we get the, the the you know weather of that particular place that's all so services are just like an abstraction okay they hide the actual implementation so if you see this one if I, if I have to add a new system anytime I can do that also if in place of Cbubble I put Salesforce still it doesn't affect my whole system these type of systems are called loosely coupled system and SOA creates a loosely coupled system that means it saves the cost to an organization that's why it is gaining popularity uh, day by day okay. so that is the thing that is there sorry let me clean this up let's talk about a very general concept of SOA or you know how to uh, in when we are going through a project management uh, you know doing that or project implementation how the SOA is works is the first thing that you have to do is you have to create a portfolio of services that means you have to expose the system that services for that you can use Java you can use .NET PL SQLs or you can use adapters so we will see that you know how easy it is to expose the system as a service using adapters once they are done you can register with UDDIs so this blue thing says that you know not all companies use it but you know UDDIs uh, can be used uh, by some of them what are UDDIs? UDDIs are exactly like yellow pages uh, that we use in our day to day life if I have to find a address of a uh, plumber or electrician in my locality so I go to a yellow page and find his address that means his physical address same thing UDDI do in a SOA word there will be multi many services and you want to go and find out where the services exist you know suppose you are want to find a service for book uh, you know book content some book filtering or something so you go to a UDDI registry and it will give you depending on the content it will give you that type of uh, uh, that type of sir uh, it will uh, it will point you to that service and it will tell you where on the server this is implemented that means it will give you its URI and that you can call that then comes ESBs or mediators mediators or ESB anything you can change you anything uh, so previously they were called ESBs now we call it uh, mediators do two important tasks one is virtualization another is routing so what does it mean routing means suppose Cibal is sending the orders data to two places one is to order manage uh, one is to SAP one is to Oracle apps so this sending of data from single source to multiple places is called routing and virtualization says that end system should not be know who is the source of data and if you see that it conforms to our SOA standard I said even if I remove Cbal with Salesforce my integration doesn't should not get affected right so virtualization helps in, in implementing SOA and mediators are one who do that then comes Beeple and Beeple job is to orchestrate the services what is orchestrate means orchestration or the orchestrate comes from the word orchestra 
So if you have seen your orchestra, you will see that there are many independent musicians who come together and you know, uh, but who come together and sit together, but they are governed by a central person who is standing in the middle and he tells them what tune to play, right? This is what orchestration is and people only orchestrate. So like, let's take an example. Suppose there is a service called debit credit card service and there is another service called, uh, you know, validate credit card. So you have to first validate the credit card and then debit it. So what Beeple does is, Beeple creates a third web service. We call it, at this moment, let's call it the master web service. Takes the data, first calls the validation credit card service, gets to know whether the credit card is valid or not. If yes, it calls the debit credit card service. So though these two are independent services, but people orchestrated their services to perform one business functionality and people only orchestrate. So throughout our exercises and all those I will show you people only orchestrate. Only thing is uh, how it does is little bit different. Okay, So we will see how as we go along. Once you have the people and all those you can always you know call and uh, use any web application which can be J uh, JSF, you can be JSP, anything to call them. This is a very general concept of, of the uh, SOA. So this is a very high level diagram and uh, why we bring this diagram at this stage is to go through some of the components and what is their working. When I say component, these green things are called components. These green are called components and they interact with each other using the service infrastructure layer. We will talk about more on those when we will be in our classes, but a very brief about, um, about these things should be known. Mediators, we already defined, they, they only help us in doing the virtualization as well as uh, the routing. Business rules, this component is used to keep volatile rules. What are volatile rules? Like if you, you see that, you know, in depending upon the season, the discount changes in the organizations, right? So we say that discounts are volatile. Like if a customer is a platinum customer, give him 10% discount. Now this 10% can change to 15% if it's a Thanksgiving, if it's, if there's, no, you know, if it's a summer, it can change to 5%. So now we can, so business tools, are used to keep such type of uh, things. Now some people ask is that you know can't we do using property files or uh, database tables? You can do that. But business rules have something extra which is called inferencing in them and uh, which makes them a lot useful than you know using the property files and others. What is inferencing is? Inferencing is let me have two rules. First tool says if customer is a platinum customer, give him 10% discount. Another rule says if a customer spends $1,000, make him a platinum customer. What does it mean? If somebody spends $1,000, he should also get 10% rule. A is equal to B, B is equal to C makes A is equal to C. So these type of inferencing we can do, but our code we have to explicitly write it. Business rule has automatically inferences these things because it has little bit of AI in built in it. And we will see how it does that when we will be in that business rule chapter. Beeple, Beeple is used for orchestration, we just saw. Human workflows. Human workflows are used wherever the human interventions are required in a business process. Like you applied for a leave, it goes to your manager for approval. Till your manager approves or disapproves leave balance, your leave is not debited from your leave balance. So here some human has come into the picture for that. So if such type of stuffs are there, human workflows are useful and we use it. B2Bs, B2Bs are used uh, for doing the e-commerce transactions like EDIs, uh, RoasterNet, HL7s. So if you have these type of things, B2B is used. Bands is used for creating the dashboard to monitor 
the data that is flowing through the system. It cannot monitor the health of your servers. It only monitors the data that flows through the system. Like a call center manager wants to know at a given time how many calls are coming to his system, how many calls are getting, uh, uh, getting dropped, what is the average time of those. So if such type of things he wants to know in real time, BAM is used. People confuse BAM with OBI and BI tools. No, it only works on the real time data. It has no idea of what the historical data is. MDS. MDS is a repository. It is used if you have some stuff that you want to share among different components like XSDs, WSDLs and all those then MDS comes into picture. Registry. Registries are nothing but UDDI which is used for you know um, for you know registering your services so that people can find those services and you know can connect to them. EMN SOA console is used for managing and monitoring the SOA suit. Okay, it is used by administrators, developers and architect at the same time, but for with different perspectives. WS policy manager is used for if you have to call some type secured services like Visa, MX and all those, then WS policy managers comes into picture. Or you want to secure your own services, then also you can use this. J developer. J developer is an IDE which is just like uh, which you use to write the codes. So you know uh, we will be using J developer throughout to write all the SOA codes. For writing the OSB codes, we will be using Eclipse. That is the standard way of how Oracle tells us. Now I will uh, uh, let's have some question answers. I will unmute you all. Please ask me the, any question and doubts you had. Unmuted. Yeah, Sarvana, you can start. Yeah.